Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this class, we are going to see 7th December 2023 related current affairs. So first, we are going to see Delhi edition of Hindu and we are going to pick out the articles which are important from our examination point of view and we are going to see in how many perspectives we can think about this article. So that perspective is very important for developing of thought process. So why this thought process is important? To write a multi-dimensional answer and to write an essay in a multi-dimensional manner. So this thought process will be very important. And nowadays you have to also think like, so how can we connect this topic from the different subjects point of view? So here there is interrelation of topics is seen. So from that point of view, so this perspectives will be very useful. So watch video till end so that you will be getting lot of important things like you can understand how to read newspaper because reading each and every word which is present in this newspaper and writing notes of each and every word which is present in newspaper it is not at all useful so what is the thing which is useful from your examination point of view we will teach you okay so if you are new to this Rathor's IS Academy so please do subscribe to this channel because we are going to post news analysis every day without any fail okay so this is the front page. The first important article here is 114 seats migrant quota cleared for Jammu and Kashmir assembly. So here we have to focus on one important bill that is Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Amendment Bill. And the second important bill is Jammu and Kashmir Reservation Amendment Bill. So actually under this reorganization bill of Jammu and Kashmir, Total number of seats in Jammu and Kashmir which had increased to 114 from 107. So earlier we have 107 and again we included 7 more seats. And in this seats, 9 seats are reserved for scheduled tribe for the first time. So the first time there is reservation of seats. How many? That is 9 seats. They had been reserved for the scheduled tribes. And it also empowers Lieutenant Governor to nominate 3 members to assembly and the two members are from Kashmiri migrants. So from migrant point of view also, now there is reservation. So how many seats? Two seats. And out of this one will be women. So here we can see there is women empowerment. Okay. So these people who came to India as refuge with wars in 1947, 1965 and 1971. And what is the importance of this bill? So this bill which seeks to replace term weak and underprivileged classes that is social caste in Jammu and Kashmir Reservation Act to now other backward caste. So these are some important points regarding this article. So this article is important from GS paper to under polity. So from polity point of view this article is important. And here you have to see even history of Jammu and Kashmir. So actually this Jammu and Kashmir was a princely state. And after we got independence in 1947, so one great challenge that is present before our newly formed nation is integration of princely states. And if you have studied your post-independent India, so there is a separate chapter on this reorganization. On this reorganization of states. So in that one part is princely states. So here you have to know about some princely states like Jammu and Kashmir, Hyderabad, Junagar. So how they had been added or how they had been united with India. Like we had different uh, mechanisms uh, like referendum, like instrument of accession and operation polo. Okay. So in that context, you have to know about those princely states. How? we integrated into Union of India and even you have to think about role of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Sardar Vallabhai Patel in integration of this princely states to Union of India. So he played a very very important role. So you have to know that. So all these things are important from this article point of view and that's all it is the only article which is important in our front page. 
and today's newspaper I didn't find much important articles to learn from our examination point of view and most of the articles are political articles so there is no need to bother about the political articles and if you move on to the city page in the city page also nothing much important and in this states page also I found nothing much important Yes, this article is not new. So, everyone knows about this that is reservation or reserving of bills by this governor for president's not. So, already you know that especially in non-BJP ruling states. In non-BJP ruling states, for example, Tamil Nadu. Next one is Kerala. Telangana in Punjab. So, in these states, especially state legislature is passing the laws or passing the bills. And after these bills are passing in the house, like state legislative assembly, and they will be placed before governor. So they will be placed before governor for assent. And according to Article 200, so, which is the article which is talking about the powers of governor regarding the passage of bills, that is article 200. It says about what are the powers which are present before the governor whenever a bill which is passed in house which comes to him for assent. Yes, he can give assent or he can reject the bill or he can send back and he can withhold the bill. And he can reserve the bill for the president assent. So now it is the th last thing we have seen in this case of Punjab. Okay, so this is about this topic. It is under genius paper to polity. So here you have to see what will be the impact. So whenever there is delaying of passage of bills, or whenever there is withholding of bills by governor, or whenever he is uh, reserving some bills for the president assent. So, what will be the impact? Okay, so, that you have to see from this article point of view. And if you move on, you can directly go to this editorial page. So, in this editorial page also, so most of the articles are just political articles. What happened? Yeah, I think it will take some time. Okay, so there are many articles which are based on the politics regarding the elections which had happened, right? So here that is not at all useful for your examination point of view. So the first article says lessons from assembly polls for 2024 bottle. We are not at all bothering about this. It's entirely political article. And next topic is Congress has an opportunity to show its governance model in Telangana. So, we are not going to focus on that. Yes, this political articles are not at all useful and please don't bother about that. And this article is important. It is talking about multi-dimensional poverty index. And we are going to see this topic in detail. So, what is this and what are the indicators and what exactly is this? Okay, so all these things are very, very important. And from this article, you can get a mains based question for sure. Okay. And this is Lokniti, so it is not at all useful. And in this text and countries are two articles. Okay, there are two important articles. The first one is Navigating US-China Relationship. So now it is what is going on between US and China. So as you all know that the relationship between US and China is not good. But now they are coming together and they are trying a lot to make their relationship good. So what are the steps you are taking? So that thing which is given here and you are going to see that in detail. And both US and China they want to restore their ties. And next topic is the role of special inquiry committees of parliament. 
So you know about this issue. So if you are following our Rathor Science Academy news analysis, so number of times we discussed about this article. So it is talking about MP Mahua Motria. So actually, uh, she has accused another one case that is a question for cash. Okay, she accused under question for cash. So because of this, it is unethical and it is also comes under the breach of privilege. So this issue which is taken by the privileges committee and finally it gave its recommendation. So because of this, we have to see this article and whether the expulsion of this MP is a constitutional or not constitutional. That thing we have to see now. So that is also given in this article and we are going to see that in detail. And this topic is important from your polity which comes in the GS paper too. And here you can see one important interesting image. So it is one of low cost non-governmental schools in Bangladesh with well trained teachers who teach students with interactive lessons and joy learning methods. So this article is talking about education at grassroots level schools in Bangladesh. So actually the uh, countries which, which are having the low literacy levels and the countries which are not focusing on the education much. So now we can use this type of experimental methods. Especially even in India also some states are leading in literacy rate but some states of, no, uh, of this especially in northern part so they are not much leading in the literacy. right? So in that context we can use this type of case studies. Okay, we can use this type of case studies like so how can we take some uh, how can you do some experiments to improve this education okay so this is very very important and in this news page also most of the articles are political articles again like how this party came into power so what are the reasons for the success so that is not at all important and I searched around 20 to 25 minutes regarding this how which articles I have to take for the discussion today so I found that most of the articles are irre irrelevant so if I take the articles of discussion which are irrelevant means I will be wasting your time so I don't want to do that okay so if you are getting much time you can spend that time on your GS right and next topic is India reminds Myanmar to return to federal democracy. So if we are talking about Myanmar, yes we are sharing direct boundary with this Myanmar. Yes or no? Yes. So the issue with this Myanmar is Rohingya's issue. So Rohingya's or persecuted Muslim minority, they fled into India and Bangladesh. And even till today, yes there are some camps in which Rohingya's you are leaving. Right? So now the issue is fighting is happening and thousands of Myanmarese nationals including former military personnel they are they are sought refuse in India okay so because of this here what happened India is showing a lot of uh, concern regarding this issue and India says that yes you have to maintain federal democracy in your country so actually there is a conflict which is intensified between armored re uh, resistance group and Myanmar military in Chin, Shan and Sagin provinces. So India reminded that Myanmar need to return to path of federal democracy. Okay, so and the both the sides from Indian side and Myanmar side, they discussed about the wide range of issues covering the situation along the border and security. They discussed about trade, commerce, connectivity, status of bilateral development projects. So they are some cause of concerns. Okay, and even transnational crimes also. So these things they had tied, they had talked about. And in this context, you have to see like which are the states of India sharing boundary with Myanmar. Okay, so that is very important. And if you move on, in this world page, there is one article. That is science clear on the need to phase out fossil fuel says US Climate Envoy. So US Climate Envoy says that we have to phase out the use of the coal. Okay. So we have to phase out some fossil fuels. So here the goal here it is to become net zero. The goal it is to become net zero by 2050 or else we have to decrease temperature of 
1.5 degree centigrade when we are comparing with this pre-industrial level and actually the, uh, actually we also studied about the draft text of global stock take right so in next today's lecture we discussed about that so here if you're talking about net zero net zero is a concept that how much amount of carbon dioxide is released into atmosphere is equal to amount of carbon dioxide absorbed okay so this concept is called as carbon neutrality or net zero emissions so that is very important concept and please let me know how can we attain this net zero so what are the steps that can be taken by the government to achieve this net zero so please let me know in the comment box and next topic is food prices likely shot up in month of november so there is increase so there may be increase in the prices of food in the month of november so here the meal plate cost estimate suggests that food prices they have hardened last month because of increasing of price of onion and tomato and vegetarian plate cost increased by nine percentage okay so here now there will be allegation like uh, again there is increasing of price rise so why why because of increasing of onion price and increasing of tomato price so price of an av average vegetarian meal surges to three months high now it is around rupees 30.3 in month of november so it is according to the crisil crisil is india's credit rating agency so rise in the meal plate attributed to 58 percentage and 35 percentage month on month because of increasing the price of onion and as well as tomato and even there is increased cost of pulses because the sowing which is very much low this year so actually farmers they went for sowing of these pulses so especially in our state in our district in our village so even our family members they went for sowing of these pulses but because of unusual rain and untimely rainfall it had been smashed almost all the pulses okay forms so because of this there will be decreasing of supply so there will be decreasing of supply of pulses in the market and if there is demand high means automatically the price of these pulses will be also increasing and if you see the cost of non-veg meal rises at a slower pace because of marginal decline in the price of broilers so broiler chicken price has been declined so because of this we will not see much change in the price of non-veg uh, plate but in this vegetarian plate yes there is increasing of prices about nine percentage so this is about this topic yes there is one more important topic here that is government seeks parliament not for extra spending for financial year 2024 so union government sought parliament's approval for spending of additional 1.29 lakh crore so additional spending is about 1.29 lakh crore in current physical year why why there is a need of ex, uh, extra spending it is regarding subsidies of farmer okay for the farmers and even for mg narega scheme mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act so, so, so here government said that net additional spending for current physical year which will be ending by March 31st and actually it is not at all enough for these two things. So because of this, yes actually there is increased uh, cost for the fertilizer subsidy for the farmers. So for that we need some additional money. Okay, finally they got approval. Okay, so this is about this topic. And these are some important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper now let us see the notes part so if you want to get these notes you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box or else you can open telegram and type rathod's ideas classes then if you search this you can get the channel okay so there we will be posting any updates regarding the classes and also regarding the notes i will be posting there so you can get the information there so first article it is about 114 seats migrant quota cleared for Jammu and Kashmir assembly as I said this article is important from GS paper to under polity 
under politics so this article is very important so now let us see why it is in news so lok sabha passed jammu and kashmir reorganization amendment bill and even jammu and kashmir reservation amendment bill 2023 so these bills are talking about reservation of seats for kashmiri migrants so these people who displaced from pakistan occupied kashmir and even they will be talking about reservation of seats for the scheduled tribes so if you see the further more details it says that respond to the statements made by opposition members regarding abrogation of article 370 of all indian constitution in jammu and kashmir could not put an end to terrorism so actually what happened on you have to go back to 2019 on august 5th and 6th 2019 so our government came up with a landmark change that is abrogation of article 370 and article 35a of indian constitution so abrogation of article 370 and article 35a so what are this articles talks about so these articles which talks about special category special category status to jammu and kashmir we'll talk about the special category status to jammu and kashmir and after this abrogation of this two articles government came up with this jammu and kashmir reorganization act so under this arts to our jammu and kashmir state divided into two uts so first ut it is jammu and kashmir and next one is ladakh so ladakh has no assembly but here jammu and kashmir which have assembly and we are talking about reservation in this assembly of ut of jammu and kashmir now okay i hope it is very much clear right the story so now here reorganization bill which increases the total number of seats in jammu and kashmir assembly that is from 107 to 114 so around 7 seats had been increased with reservation of about 9 seats are reserved for scheduled tribes for the first time and even it also empowers lg lieutenant governor to nominate three members in the assembly and out of this two members are from kashmiri migrant community and one should be compulsory woman and the third member being a representative of people from pok okay so these are the three members the power is given to lieutenant governor it is very important so power is not present with the president it is present with the lieutenant governor and what is the significance of this move so whenever there is a reservation of the seats for this kashmiri pandits and migrants from pok so it is also aimed at addressing of these people concerns and the concerns of these communities will be raised in the assembly and what are the problems you have faced in regard to displacement and what are the challenges you are facing due to the region's political history and conflicts those issues can be heard now and also intended to give them a voice and representation in the democratic process of jammu and kashmir so because of this so this reservation is very very important right and now let us move on to next topic it is about multi dimensional poverty index so this article is at most important because you can get a directly a mains question from this topic and poverty it is present in your gs paper to under your governance topic directly so if there is any news regarding the poverty or if any report regarding the poverty or if any study regarding the poverty seen in news that will become very very important you have to focus on that even what are the data that is present so you have to make down that data note down that data in the data in this data work So if you see this article is focusing on multi dimensional poverty index right so what exactly is this multi dimensional poverty so when a person who is poor he can suffer multiple disadvantages at the same time for example he will be having a very poor health so he will be not having access to the healthcare services and he will be facing malnutrition because of lack of food and even they do not have proper clean water or electricity and they will be having the poor quality of work and or sometimes even little schooling so these are the multiple disadvantages when a
person who is faking that will comes in this multidimensional poverty so focusing on one factor such as income it is not at all enough to say about this uh, poverty but this multidimensional poverty it is a measure that captures deprivation in education and it will be focusing on access to basic infrastructure and it will be focusing on income or consumption okay etc but here world bank says that if a person who is earning less than 1.90 us dollars then that will comes under international poverty line so this data is very important so whenever you are writing the data in your answers try to write authenticated data like according to imf according to unesco according to world bank like that and recently here niti ayog released this national multi dimensional poverty index a progress review 2023 and this index is one of the important tool because it will enables the country to track its progress towards sustainable development goals particularly we are focusing on sustainable development goal 1.2 so it is focusing on zero poverty or end poverty in all dimensions so using this national family health survey data it showcases that india's 2019 21 Multi-dimensional poverty index results results a progress in multi-dimensional poverty reduction that is between 2015-16 and 2019-21. So it is a data which is covered in this report. So we're talking about this global multi-dimensional poverty index. So this captures overlapping deprivations in health, in education, and in living standards. so even it complements income poverty measurements because it measures and compares deprivation directly and this global mpi report it is published by oxford poverty and human development along with this undp so this point is very important from your prelims because in your prelims you can get a question like so recently this index is seen in news so which organization released that index So from that point of view, yes, this uh, is very very important. And what is the agenda of twenty thirty under this multi-dimensional poverty index? So first and the foremost thing here is we have to address this sustainable development goal, and we have around seventeen sustainable development goals related to economy, environment, and even social aspects of societal well-being. And we are focusing on a principle that is. leaving no one behind so we are focusing on this principle that is leaving no one behind so what are the indicators are there here so we are focusing on the indicators and their weight so we have health we have education the standard of living so these are the three indicators so out of which in this health we have weights like we are focusing on nutrition okay we are focusing on nutrition we are focusing on child and adolescent mortality and maternal health so these three are very important indicators under this health and under this education we have years of schooling and school attendance and in standard of living we will be checking with cooking fuel is present or not whether the sanitation is available or not whether the clean drinking water is accessible or not housing is present or not electricity and what are the assets you are having So these are the indicators that we are focusing on. And next one here is what are the highlights of this report 2023? So first one it is saying that yes there is steep decline in the poverty. Okay, so when we are comparing 2015, 16, and now this report says that yes there is decrease declining of poverty. And actually 135 million people exited exited okay exited multi-dimensional poverty between this period. that means they came out of this poverty line okay below poverty line and if you are seeing the tracking of this sdg that is sustainable development goal target 1.2 so it said that poverty had been at least half had been decreased and all twelve indicators they have shown some improvement in india and even there is reduction in incidence of poverty in urban areas and there is declining of uh, percentage of multi dimensional poor in rural areas that had been decreased from 32 percentage to 19 percentage in urban areas 8 percentage to 5 percentage and there is intensity of this poverty which has also been uh, decreased 
from 44 to 40, uh, 47 to 44 percentage and especially poor uh, states in India are like UP, UP is there, Bihar is there, MP, Odisha, Rajasthan. So these are the very important four states where this MDI is poor. And even we can see there is improvement in nutrition, years of schooling, sanitation, cooking fuel. So they play a very significant role in reducing this MPI value. So these are the some important highlights of this 2023 report. So this is very, very important students. And here if you see this map, so it is talking about poverty index. So in this poverty index, Bihar had the highest share of multidimensionally poor people and Kerala which is having the least number. Kerala is having the least number, okay, that is 0 0.7. And especially if you see this image, we can see south it is performing well compared to that of this north and as well as central India and eastern part. Okay, south is doing well. And you have to see where your state stands. And next topic is navigating the US-China relationship. So this article is very, very important from your international relations because you have to understand what is going on across the world. And here China is your neighboring country and US it is a country you are having the good relations. So what happened, US President and Chinese counterpart, that is Xi Jinping, so they held a summit in San Francisco on November 15th on sidelines of APE, that is Asia Pacific Economic Conference. So the aim of this summit, it is to resurrect a bilateral relationship that is now at its lowest point. So what are the relationship that is present between India, between US and China? It is at very, very lowest point and they want to revive it. So because of that, they came up with this summit on the sidelines of Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Conference. So if you see details, it says that so the most consequential outcome of this meet, it was like they have, they want to restore military to military communications okay between these two nuclear power countries and it is very much critical to prevent potentially catastrophic miscalculations and even both sides us and china they are leveraging their own areas of strength to inflict maximum damage to other and even they are focusing on how to decrease escalations okay between the bilateral dispute and even they want to focus on especially military, technological supremacy, etc. So they are the some important things that had been talked, okay, talked by this US and as well as China. And next topic is the role of special inquiry committees of parliament. So this article is very important, okay, from your polity point of view. So now let us see what is the context. Actually, this topic it is not a new topic, but now here committee gave the recommendation so what can be done in this case so because of this again it is in news so here why it is in news the ethics committee so in your Lakshmi Khan, you will be having a chapter of parliamentary committee so please go through that once and if you see here the context it says that ethics committee ethics committee of Lok Sabha is believed to have recommended the expulsion of Trinamool Congress member of Parliament, that is uh, Mahua Motria, Mahua Moitra, so from Lok Sabha for her unethical conduct and breach of privilege. So there is a one action did by this MP, that action is unethical, and as well as it is coming under this breach of privilege. Okay, so because of this the issue which is taken by this privilege com uh, committee. So this follows ethics committee which is examining the complaints which accused her of asking questions to target a business house okay by taking cash so by taking cash she asked her the question so it is allegation and she was accused and now this issue which is taken by this ethics committee and as well as privilege committee so what is the role of this ethics committee so ethics committee it is constituted in year 2000 and this committee which is focusing on oversee the moral and ethical conduct of members and even it will be examining the cases of unethical conduct which are referred to it. So whenever the cases which are given to it, so it will be reviewing the cases. 
and the committee which also examines the complaints filed against members of the house by other members outsiders to a member or a referred by the speaker so what is the functions of this committee so it will be seeing the complaints which are filed against the members of house by other members or even outsiders though through a member or a referred by speaker so whenever any uh, any complaint which is uh, given by the other members or which is referred by the speaker so that will be taken by this ethics committee and next important point here is committee makes a prima facie inquiry before deciding to examining a complaint and presents its report to the speaker so to whom the report is given that is to speaker who places it before the house for the consideration and next what are this privileges committees so the privileges committee or a special inquiry committee so privilege committee or a special inquiry committee so it will examine the more serious accusation against the member okay so it will examine the more serious accusations against a member and in 1951 a special committee found a member guilty promoting the business interest putting the questions in return for the financial benefits so actually this type of case which had been recorded in 1951 and it was again a special committee that required into this cash for quarry scam of 2005 and there about 10 mps of lok sabha they were recommended for expulsion that means removing so whether this expulsion is constitutional or not whether it is presidential or constitutional or not so it is a big question mark now so actually article 101 which list about what are the grounds for vacation of the seats by mp so it says that it includes voluntary resignation or disqualification and because of continuous absence from the house for the next 60 sittings so these are the things which are present but there is nothing which is written in our constitution regarding expulsion of a member of parliament but here whatever the supreme court that said here is in one famous case that is raja ram pulses versus honorable speaker case of 2007 it said that yes the power of parliament so parliament have the power to expel its members for the breach of privilege okay so expulsion can be done so this is the thing which mainly said by this supreme court judgment in raja ram pal versus honorable speaker case of 2007 so here whenever you are writing about expulsion of a member of parliament so try to incorporate this case okay supreme court case that is raja ram pal versus honorable speaker of 2007 so even though there is no provision of uh, expulsion of a member okay that is not present in our constitution according to article 101 but this supreme court judgment says that yes expulsion can be done on the ground of the breach of privilege okay so that is about this topic and next topic it is about one dance form that is garba dance so garba dance of gujarat makes it to unesco list So this article is important from GS paper one that is art and culture point of view. So in your Nitin Singhania, you will be having a chapter like tangible and intangible UNESCO heritage site, right? So you have to include this Garba dance. So now Garba dance makes into this UNESCO list. So because of this, there is a chance of getting question regarding this uh, heritage site. So please go to the chapter in your Nitin Singhania. And now let us see the context. It says that. Gujarat's traditional dance form. So it is a traditional dance form of which state? Gujarat. So Gujarat traditional dance form that is Garba included in the list of intangible cultural heritage by United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization that is UNESCO. So UNESCO declared that Gujarat it is one of the traditional dance form. Gujarat traditional dance form is Garba. So now it is included in this intangible cultural heritage. and if you see some details it says that this is one of the popular dance form and it is a 15th cultural item from india to make into this unesco list and recently two years back kolkata's durga puja was also had been increased uh, had been included and now as of now this garba is also included now it is a 15th item so this inclusion has been made under the provisions of 2003 convention for the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage 
an international cultural body which described the garba so garba what is that it is a ritualistic dance form right and it is a devotional dance which is performed in india especially in gujarat state during this dasra navratri festivals so if you are talking about uh, some facts regarding this garba dance so garba it is a dance form and it is native to indian states of gujarat and it is formed in month of it is performed in the month of october okay to honor hindu deity of divinity that is goddess durga and it is a joyful style of dance which is based on circular pattern and it is characterized by sweeping action from side to side and garba performances often include singing and also a musical accompany accompaniment and traditionally provided by dhol dhol that is nothing but the double headed drum and we can also use smaller dholak and even hand clapping and we have metallic idiophones such as cymbals so they are the instrument which are used in this dance and this garba dances celebrates fertility and honor womanhood and pay respect to any of an array of mother goddess and in gujarat the dance customarily okay customarily marks a girl's first menstrual cycle and later her emitted marriage so garba dancing also takes a place during the ninth day of navratri festival okay so this is the significance of this garba dance so these are some important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper now i want to come up with an announcement so from the next monday onwards we are going to start this prelims booster course so in this prelims booster course we are going to give you day to day schedule and based on that day to day schedule you will be having test daily and you will be having the live classes will be taken by four faculty members and that uh, classes will be there from evening 6 to 7 to 7:30 pm okay and one more thing here is so there is a increasing of uh, toughness or the difficulty in clearing the prelims to clear this prelims so please join this course and the course to cost is 4500 rupees and if you want to get the more details and even this also include this prelims test series as well prelims test series daily test and live classes you will be having the schedule and you will be getting the personal mentorship okay so everything will be included and even we are covering the current defaults of last one year from last may to this april so we are also going to cover current defaults and we are going to give you the value added material of your current defaults as well so this is a very very important course that you can join right and if you want to join this course and if you want to maximize your marks if you are getting like 50 to 60 now you can increase that to 90 to 100 marks and if you are getting around 80 to 90 will you can increase up to 110 marks for sure so this will be helpful for increase your marks in your prelims so if you want to contact us to join this course you can call me on this number 8074765513 okay and even this is whatsapp number you can join okay you can uh, text me on this whatsapp number and one more thing here is daily mains answer writing course of december month is going to be started from 11th december onwards so try to join this course also so that here you will be having much more benefits and if you want to join both this prelims and as well as mains you will be getting additional discount so if you want so please contact me on this whatsapp number or telegram or you can directly call me on this number to talk to me okay so that's all and if you want to get the notes of this class you can join this telegram channel so this is the telegram channel the authors is classes where we'll be posting this pdf and the link of the class and this is Nathos Eyes Academy YouTube channel so please do subscribe to this channel don't forget to subscribe and this is our website so if you have any doubts regarding UPSC you can visit our website so there you will be getting syllabus book list and you can download some important notes and uh, NCERTs okay so if you want to see the demo classes so you can click on this play course and you can watch three demo videos for free but before that you have to log in and uh, sign up with our website that's all for today 
So please do join this students booster course. It is very very useful and you will be not getting that type of course with that much low price anywhere. So by this I am concluding. I hope you enjoyed this class. So if you really like this class, please hit the like button and don't forget to share this class to your friends. And please do subscribe to Rathor's IELTS Academy. Thank you so much for watching.